Hi, I'm Jonathan Schaefer. I'm a postgraduate researcher at the University of Salford. In this short video, I'd like to show you acoustic and psychoacoustics modeling software, which I've developed as part of my PhD project. For optimal visual clarity, please make sure to watch this video in HD. I'll explain how the model works and then demonstrate how it can be applied to problems in the room acoustics and spatial audio. So very briefly, just to give you a general idea, I've based the room model on the finite difference time domain method, which is used to numerically solve the acoustic wave equation. One of the advantages of this method is that it naturally accounts for all inherent wave behavior, such as reflection, diffraction, and occlusion. More specifically, I use a recently published family of low dispersion numerical schemes, which turn out to be very efficient in simulating room acoustics. One of the disadvantages of the FDTD method is that it can be rather computationally expensive, especially if one wishes to model large spaces at high resolution. So to overcome this, I've parallelized the method to run on general purpose graphics hardware. And this is an approach becoming increasingly popular in science and engineering. The computational engine is written in standard C with CUDA extensions and is cross-platform. For an easier integration in the scientific workflow, I designed a MATLAB toolbox which can be used as a front-end to the solver. To define geometry and boundary conditions, the model can import standard 3D vector formats, and I also wrote a Google SketchUp plugin to make things easier. The model's preprocessor then voxelizes the geometry and applies boundary conditions. Here, for example, a model of the Elmia concert hall is shown. And this is a hall which is typically used in round-robin tests. Once all conditions have been applied, the toolbox executes the solver, which calculates impulse responses at the receiving positions. We can either visualize the results in real-time inside MATLAB or use an offline application. Here, for example, I used Paraview, which is based on the open-source VTK. It's possible to play around with a model, to slice the volume along all principal axes, or to produce a complete volume rendering. The perceptual stage of the model requires binaural impulse responses to work with. So to achieve this, we embed in the model laser scans of human subjects. And these can be based on standard mannequins such as Kimar, your own head, or any other arbitrary shape, even Perry the platypus. Since the listener geometry is part of the grid, the corresponding HRTF is calculated using the same FDTD algorithm as used for the room. Clearly, to achieve an accurate representation of all spatial cues, the model's got to be solved in a very high resolution. But if only binaural cues are required, then even coarse grids work well. The room simulator itself can be used standalone to study room acoustics. And regardless of this project, we've actually applied it to investigate some interesting problems, for example, reflections in the ancient Stonehenge and the echoes at uh, the famous Echo Bridge in Massachusetts. Obtaining binaural responses is usually where most room models end, but in this case I've supplemented the room model with a perceptual model which is used to investigate sound localization in complex listening situations. Once the signals are captured at the virtual listener's ears, they're passed through a physiologically inspired model simulating the function of the middle ear, the cochlea and the auditory nerve. The resulting neural firing densities are passed through a binaural processor, primarily based on a cue selection method suggested by Fowler and Merima. This processor assumes that the auditory system only selects cues at times in which they resemble free field cues. So its main objective is to extract relevant binaural information from the complex stimuli in a psychoacoustically plausible manner. The model then analyzes this information at different critical bands. So for example, here a source is placed at 30 degrees to the right of the listener, and the model shows highest correlation values at this azimuth. Some high values are also observed at 150 degrees, which corresponds to an expected front-back confusion. Finally, all the information is integrated across frequency to make a single localization judgment with some confidence. And this is similar to a listener participating in a forced choice listening test. In this example, the model correctly responds that the source is presented at 30 degrees. 
More interesting situations involve multiple sources or a single source at the presence of reflections. For example, if two sources radiate the same signal with no level or time delay, then the model responds that the auditory event is perceived to be exactly between the two sources. Of course, this is expected in a summing localization setting. If a small time delay is presented, the model responds that the auditory event is shifted towards the location of the early or leading source. Increasing the time delay causes a precedence mechanism to be triggered and the model suppresses the effect of the secondary wavefront generated by the lagging source. At higher time delays, the effect of the lagging source is no longer suppressed and high correlation is shown at two distinct locations. This is equivalent to the perception of acoustic echo, where the two sources are no longer perceptually fused. So I hope that this short presentation has given you at least a general idea on what I do and what this model is all about. The model is developed for academic purposes and is not intended for commercial use.